Hey YouTube, or everybody. Um, so I haven't shared a video in a few days, probably since, um, not since I got out of the hospital, I think. Um, but I thought I'd share one today. It is um, Saturday the 8th, 9th, I think. Um, my brother just went home today. I have a friend who's coming in tonight and she's gonna help take care of me and make up the difference, you know, sort of uh, pick up where my brother left off. Um, but I just wanted to sort of check in and say, I'm really doing great. And um, there's still some pain and still some discomfort and still some things I'm learning. Um, <clears throat> like uh, peeing is sort of, you know, new. It's not just sit down and go. Cause you know, all of the materials that are used are materials that were there. And so the sensations are similar and sometimes the same, but they're in different places. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to work it out and uh, not make a mess of myself and mess of things, but I'm doing pretty okay, I think. Um, and I'm able to do more stuff um, with less pain meds now, but yesterday, uh, it is easy for me to overdo it. Um, yesterday, uh, my brother and I went to the um, Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum or something um, in, uh, uh, on the uh, bottom tip of Manhattan, wherever that is. Um, sorry, I'm from Chicago. I don't know these things, but it's in lower Manhattan. Uh, and it's a great big aircraft carrier. It's an Essex class aircraft carrier and they have a, um, a submarine that you can walk through and you can walk through a whole bunch of the aircraft carrier. Obviously not everything, it's the size of a city, but um, you can see all kinds of the planes that they launched from it, a lot of the history of that particular um, uh, submarine and aircraft carrier and um, they have one of the old uh, Concorde airplanes for those of you who are old enough to remember the Concorde um, that was the supersonic passenger jet that would fly from the US to Europe and back uh, and it would do it in like three hours uh, the, I think the the one that's there actually holds the speed record from New York to London and it's like two hours and 52 minutes um, but you can't go inside of that one without a special, um, uh, a special um, surcharge or additional fee, uh, which I didn't know. But um, my brother was in the Navy for eight years, so and he served on a submarine, so it was really kind of cool to be able to walk through like this old diesel sub, um, and listen to him compare it to his uh, um, the nuclear sub that he served on. And, uh, and and compare all of that with the operations of the, the aircraft carrier. And um, it was neat looking at all of these old, uh, all of these airplanes. They had everything from like the F-14s that were in Top Gun to uh, like the F-16s and the Kafirs that were in um, Iron Eagle, which is another movie that he and I grew up watching in the 80s. Um, and you know, all these little prop planes and uh, uh, it was just, it was a whole lot of fun. We did a lot of things and, and we walked something like more than just over five and a half miles, according to our phones, and um, went up the equivalent of 10 flights of stairs because uh, there was a lot of up and down in the, um, in the uh, aircraft carrier. But the coolest thing was that we got to see the Enterprise Space Shuttle um, which was the, uh, the, the, or, it wasn't an orbiter. It was, um, it was the, the prototype that they used to prove the case that it could make controlled landings. Um, so it was a, it was altitude and takeoff and landing or uh, altitude takeoff and landing, um, uh, test model for the actual space shuttle. Um, and so it was really cool to just be in the same space with it and see it, you know, sort of. Yeah, just above you and in front of you. And uh, for kids like us who grew up in the 80s when the space shuttle was like brand new and and uh, just this this vision of everything that the future could be, right? It was it was hope and it was power and it was ingenu human ingenuity. And of course it was the Cold War. So there was some, you know, um, we can fly up in this reusable, awesome looking shuttle and the uh, 
so, uh, Soviets are using the Soyuz rocket. They're still putting a little bubble of things on the top, tip of a giant rocket and firing it into space and then catching the bubble when it comes down, you know, et cetera, that stuff. Um, jokes, space shuttle is done. Soyuz is still running. And now we're renting space on the Soyuz to get to the International Space Station. So, you know, sometimes that's how it goes. But growing up in the 80s and the 90s, the space shuttle was just everything. It was fantastic. And um, in fact, I um, there's a movie called Space Camp in which a bunch of kids are attending space camp in um, Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, although I think they move it to, they pretend it's in Kennedy uh, Space Center in Florida. But um, through various circumstances of the film, uh, this group of the kids end up on a shuttle that is fueled while they do a, a, a uh, firing test to make sure, you know, that the engines are working and they end up actually in space, right? So I'm watching this movie because it's it's so cheesy. It is so cheesy. Um, but I'm watching the movie. I realized that I'm watching it on like January 30th, which is um, right in between the anniversary of the Challenger disaster and the Columbia disaster. Excuse me. Um, and when the Challenger blew up in 1986, I was in, I think, second grade. And they, we didn't, we weren't watching it live, but, um, I, you know, for everyone who was a child uh, and, you know, know where they are when they heard the Challenger blew up. Announcement came over the PA system and, you know, there was an actual teacher on board and it was just this huge thing. Um, so I'm watching this and they used actual archival footage in this film for the shuttle launch. Um, and I think they must have used Discovery or something. Um, and I, I was just weeping. I was sobbing watching this uh, film. So to see the Enterprise up close, to be that close to an actual shuttle was just magic to me. And it was, it was like seeing a live dinosaur. Um, and my brother felt the same way. And it was really cool that we got to experience that together. But um, let me tell you, <laughs> um, nine days post-op, that is a lot of walking to do. Let's see, I had my surgery Tuesday, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, 10 days post-op. Um, that is a lot of walking to do, and it's more than I ought to have done. So um, today I have taken it very easy, and I have just been relaxing in the apartment and uh, hanging out with my brother. Um, we have watched seven of the eight Fast and the Furious movies because he has seen all of them and I have seen none of them. Or I've seen only like the first one um, and he really enjoyed them. So, you know, he was, she was sharing that with me and it was really cool. Um, but honestly, I, it's mostly just healing and dilating for those of you who know what that is. Um, it's messy and it's tedious and it's a chore. Uh, in fact, rather than having to say, I have to go dilate to my brother <laughs> over and over again, I kept telling, you know, I would just say, I'm, I have to go do my chores. Um, so, uh, you know, that's sort of been my life as just staying on my med schedule or trying to, so that it minimizes, you know, sort of the pains. Um, I'm doing really good. I'm down to Tylenol and ibuprofen. Yesterday, after all of that walking, I did take, um, I did take an oxy, um, which I hadn't had to take for a couple of days. Um, today it's just been on, um, and ibuprofen again. Um, you know, I, I had, had talked in the hospital about uh, the weird hernia nerve pain. That resolved within a day of coming home um, or to this apartment where I'm recuperating. Um, so I have not had that. I had that one time, I think, here. Um, and then that's gone away. I have my first follow-up appointment on Tuesday, so I'll talk to the doctor and, you know, she'll see how everything is healing and how everything's looking. And, um, uh, you know, so right now it's just sort of chilling and relaxing and uh, it's getting easier to sit <laughs> um, without having to sit on a cushion or a pillow. Um, you know, things, swelling is going down and... Uh, things are still tender. Like, I don't want to get too graphic, but, you know, um, stitches are stitching and, you know, things are healing and everything's sort of ending up where it's supposed to be, as far as I can tell. Um, aesthetically, I'm really pleased with the results. 
I think Dr. Luban Langner and Dr. Zhao did a fantastic job. And I think that once everything is fully healed and all of the swelling goes down, and, and that's a process of like three to six months, um, you know, I, I think once that settles, I'm going to be super, super pleased. Um, not, I mean, not that there's a lot I could do about it, but, um, you know, I don't, un unless there's something like major anatomically problematic, I don't foresee needing um, a revision or anything. Um, I think they do really great work and I recommend them. If it's, uh, if they're on your insurance, uh, I, I really do recommend their process. Uh, their office was great. Their surgeons were great. The work is great. Um, so, you know, everything is proceeding along. I miss everyone at home. Um, I, uh, I've not been, like I said, my brother was here and I've just been sort of healing. So I haven't really been up to visiting with my New York friends. Um, uh, I'm here for another nine days or something. So hopefully, uh, once my, um, once my friend who's coming tonight, uh, returns home in a couple of days, I'll be able to, I feel up to scheduling some things with, um, with some folks who live here if they're up for it. Um, and, uh, you know, sort of keep getting ready to move on with my life. Um, let's see. There is one other thing that like, I'm going to make a separate video about, uh, that's been sort of a drawback or sort of a issue, um, or complaint, I guess. Um, but, uh, it's not necessarily related to healing process. Um, but yeah, no, so I'm doing good and, uh, everything is, uh, is proceeding along as planned. So that's why it's been quiet. It's kind of no news is good news. Um, I am, um, I don't know. I, I just, I really think that, uh, this was the right choice for me and I'm really happy with the choice I made and with the results that I got. And, um, I am really looking forward to, you know, putting this, this first stage of it, uh, all behind me and, uh, just going on with living my life. So, um, I'm going to cut it there and, uh, and say, thank you all. I miss you. You've been great. And thank you for all of the notes of encouragement. Everything has been so sweet and so kind. And I love you.